Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, May 26th, uh, 2014. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Go to a parade. Show your fucking respect. And go eat a bunch of burgers. Um, and then you'll get fucking shit face and say something that you shouldn't have fucking said. Maybe hit on your wife's sister. Get punched in your fucking head. Um, anyways, if you can, you can hear the echo in the room that I'm back downstairs is the, the project downstairs inches along. Um, you know, those of you listening to this podcast, you know, from a year and a half ago, not even a year and a half, 14 months ago when I had that fucking water damage. Um, I like to think it was a blessing in disguise because the part of the house upstairs was immaculate <laughs> and I had just redone that room. So that sucked. But below it was, it was, it was a fucking tree fort. It was shit. It needed to be fucking replaced anyways. It's a fucking, I don't know. I didn't want to get into it. And now of course they get under the house and what I already knew was because I had somebody do some electrical on my house before he was cleaning up a little bit down there, and he's in the crawl space, which is right underneath my living room. And I hear him down there. Every once in a while, I was hearing this guy just going, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it wasn't good. I knew it wasn't good, and he told me that there was a lot of shit work down there, and I'm lucky I didn't have a fire and that he replaced most of it. So the foreman on this other job... You know, some of the stuff that they've taken out, they actually, you know, accidentally disconnected the phone. You know, bullshit happens as these guys work on your house. So, you know, he reiterated, you know, he didn't use the F-bomb, but I could tell by what he was talking about that I had some issues in the electrical department in my house. So, um, you know, I'm going to get that all taken care of, which brings me to my question here. Solar power, everybody. Can I take five minutes just to be a fucking hippie, man? Um, every once in a while, I go in and out of my fucking, you know, I'm with the team and now and then, and then I'm against the team, you know? Kind of like a fucking, uh, like a Randy Moss, you know? You come into town, you got your mind right, and after about a season and a half, you start acting like a fucking maniac. That's how I feel when I look at uh, whatever the fucking expression. I'm really trying to avoid the expression, the powers that be. But um, I don't know. I can't help it every time when I land in Los Angeles and I look out at the basin, as they call it, um, from the San Gabriel Mountains all the way south of that, which is fucking L.A. and greater L.A., all of that. Just what an absolute clusterfuck it is. And um, what happens when the shit hits the fan? So I'm thinking about getting some solar panels. And I know all you rednecks out there are saying the obvious thing. The fuck good's a solar panel going to do if you ain't got a gun? What, are you going to keep the guy warm that fucking shoots you in the head and steals your provisions? I understand the fucking bearded wonder, all right? I get it, but I one step at a time. One step at a fucking time. First thing I want to do, I want to get, you know, it's ridiculous. I live in a fucking desert. The house bakes in the sun, and I'm, I still have, I don't have solar power. It's the dumbest shit ever. So uh, I'm going to look into it. And what I want to know is, is, you know, is there two types of solar power? There's one where you're still on the grid, and then there's one where you're off the grid. I like off the grid. And, and if anybody's listening to my podcast, if you're off the grid, like, what happens? Do they, like, do they get mad at you? <laughs> I mean, how do they know? Because all of a sudden your bill goes down? Does that, like, set off a light? You know, and underneath the mountain that all those Illuminati guys live in, and then somebody pulls up to your house, hey, I noticed you uh, haven't been making any toast lately. And, uh, you know, what's going on here? How come you're not, you're not watching TV? What, are you reading books in there? Fucking eating apples off a tree? How come you're not using any electrical uh, electricity there? Does that happen? 
Is it? It's not illegal to be off the grid. They just sort of fucking. Uh, do they bully you at all? Like, just let me know what I'm in for. All right. Because what I would love to do is to continue spending my legal tender that really has nothing behind it other than the faith of every freckled face cunt over here. Um, I would really love to continue existing in this, but I would like to have the backup that if the shit does hit the fan before I'm overrun by a mob, you know, because mine's the only light on the top of the hill. See, that's I used to do a bit about that. That's the thing. Like, if, if you actually have... If you're off the grid, all right, and everything just goes fucking haywire, you immediately, you got to cut your lights out quick, okay? Because the first thing, when everybody loses power, they stand there and go, oh, you got to be fucking shitting me. I was watching two broke girls over here. Right? That's the first thing. You flip the switches, is it, and then, you know, within 30 seconds, you're like, is it just our house? And you look out the window. So you basically, you have 30 fucking seconds to cut all your lights off, tell your wife to shut the fuck up and get downstairs in that little corner room. All right? And you put your hand on her shoulder. Firmly. You don't hurt her, but you're not affectionate. You place your hand on her shoulder so she knows that some pertinent fucking information is on the way. And you say, honey, we're the only ones left. The only ones left. Look at me. Stop crying. We're the only one. <laughs> We're the only ones left with power, and I need you to hold it together. Cry it out now. I want you to cry every ounce of bitch you have in you out of you in this corner of this house. Okay. And when you come upstairs, I want you to sit here and act like we do not have power. Okay. So when the Sullivans come across the fucking street and see if we don't have power, you lie to their fucking faces. Shh, honey. Forget about the Sullivans. They're not going to make it. You understand? You know, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen to anybody, but I don't want to be the Sullivans. You know what I mean? I want a shot. Just give me a fucking shot. That's all I need. I just need some solar panels and a fucking helicopter, and I will get the fuck out of here. That's what you need, you fucking idiots, with your guns. Huh? What are you, Schwarzenegger? How long is that going to last? Um, anyway, so I'm thinking about it. Does anybody, does anybody live in the L.A. area? Does anybody have solar panels anywhere in the fucking world? Can you recommend it? Are there two different kinds? Because I actually looked up solar panels off the grid and uh, I came to this place, uh, Blue Pacific Solar. It says off-grid packages. Um, then there's another one that just says get solar power, sun power, off-grid systems, off-grid system, backwoods solar electric systems. <laughs> yeah, I can install that shit. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it in and we'll just run it over the outhouse. A what? Cabana? What, what's that, a cigar? Um. <laughs> Sorry. I'm in a stupid fucking mood this week. Um. Yeah, oh, then there's one for Australia. I don't mind paying the grid, but I would like to have, if the grid fails, to have the then off the grid switch. How about that? Can we just have that? Those of you who've been on the internet this week, you know the direction that I'm working in. Oh, yes, you do. To stop being modest, you know the direction I'm going in. I'm talking about solar fucking roads. Has anybody seen this, this YouTube video? It's fucking amazing. If, if what they're saying is true about these solar roads, um, and I apologize for the narrator. I get what he's doing. He's trying to keep it interesting, but he kept it interesting too long. And then he brings it down to an interlude, which should have come a minute earlier. And then he goes back to screaming. So it's a little bit annoying, but, uh, just try to listen to the information and then try not to get sucked into a George Bush Obama debate because, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if these things, what the fuck do I know? Right. But it just, they were basically saying if we replaced 
all our roads with these solar fucking things that literally look, makes it look like Legoland and it's all lit up. And there'd be sensors to let you know a deer's going around the corner and then it would just light up in the turn. Hey, there's a fucking deer around the corner. You know, enjoy your barley pancakes or whatever, right? Some fucking full-on hippie shit. And that basically the amount of energy that it would create would be three times what this country even needed, which immediately we can just leave the Middle East, right? We don't have to be over there pissing them off by getting in the middle of their bullshit, all right? We don't have to deal with oil, and oil money is what funds the terrorists as far as my limited reading goes, right? The, the, the families over there that fuck... Hang on, she's scratching... I just gave you a bath. What's wrong? Oh, Cleo. Um, anyways. Uh, yeah, like the fucking the, the oil people over, the people who make all the money over there, they then donate to mosques. And then in the mosque, they fucking, you know, kind of fucking, hey, you know. Send it over to these fucking people over here that end up coming back at us, shooting shit at us. As far as, you know, like I said, I don't know shit. Cleo, would you stop fucking, you're going to have to go to the other room here. Come here, buddy. What's up, sweetie? We went on a nice hike today, didn't we? Huh? Yes, we did. All right, get out of here. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, and then that whole fucking thing is just null and void. We have all this extra power. We actually do. We create a bunch of jobs. The only thing I don't know is the way it looks. It doesn't seem like it's a smooth ride. It just seems like the whole time you'd be going like over these fucking things. I, I have no idea, but just check it out. And I swear to God, because this is something that I don't know if it, if it is, if it does work, if it does fucking work, it could benefit everybody. Conservatives, liberals, independents. Every, who wouldn't benefit from all of this energy? Oh, that's right. The people in power. Oh, how could I forget that? That's right. How do you think that they're going to derail this if this actually becomes a movement? How will they somehow tie in terrorism, 9-11, liberals, fucking right-wing conservatives, and just get the, the pot fucking stirring so everybody's screaming and yelling? It's going to be prohibitively expensive and uh, babies will starve. They're going to do all of that shit. Um, the only way this thing gets off the ground, if it works, if it works, is if people don't get sucked into those arguments and we all become one and we all pick up a hatchet and we start marching towards the bankers' gated communities. Okay. Because the asphalt streets will have to run red with blue blood money before something wonderful like this will ever fucking happen. Because you are fucking with a century and a half of cash flow going to a small amount of people. That's what you're fucking with. And when you're fucking with something like that, that level of money... Basically, the money that gives the dollar power, like the only thing that gives the U.S. dollar power is that oil, barrels of oil are still measured in U.S. dollars. Other than that, it's a fucking shit show. So these guys are the guys behind all of that. It's them and the fucking bankers. And that's it. All right. The insurance company is like the Ted Kennedy of that fucking family. All right. But fucking Bobby and Jack. All right. Actually, the banks are fucking Joe Kennedy. All right. Well, shut up with the Kennedy shit. All right. So anyways. That's my, my thing. Like, this is a great fucking idea. If it works, if it works, it's a fucking great idea. Even if you just did a few roads, if you just did a few of them, each state just did, like, their main highway or whatever, if you just did that, I can't imagine the amount of, of money it would save. And on the less, the, oh, man, it was incredible. The possibilities of it are incredible. I don't know if it works, but it is fucking incredible. But the sad thing is um, the fact that whenever new stuff like this comes up, it all just turns into uh, Obama, Bush, Republican, Democrat, blah, blah. Everybody's just yelling at each other, and then it just fucking goes away, and then everybody turns on sports, and that's what happens. So there you go. There's old off-the-grid Billy, 15 minutes of crazy talk, but that makes sense to me. 
Makes sense to me, man. Fuck, you know? We'd get this done if everybody wasn't so, so, so fucking liberal. All them liberals out there in Hollywood, right? And I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm, I'm not just making fun of a stereotypical Southern guy, all right? Because I, having lived out here in Hollywood, these people are out of their fucking minds. They, they're Fox News to the left. They're out of their fucking minds. They're, they're, they're such fucking hypocrites where it's just like, you can say the most, uh, I guess racist isn't the word, because you, you can make fun of white people. Rich white people, you, you can basically, you can be, uh, you can use the exact fucking thing that they don't like seeing used on poor people against rich people and they fucking love it. You know, you can suggest that people from the South are all fucking their sisters and they're slapping their knees and they're doing the wave in the crowd. All right. But if you suggest any homeless guy needs to get off his fucking ass, stop boozing and get a fucking job, then you're the devil. So, I mean, I don't know. Does that make any sense? Well, it shouldn't. Isn't that why you listen to this podcast, you cunts? All righty then. Let's uh, let's do a little bit of advertisements. I'd like to advertise. Any, any solar people want to advertise on this fucking podcast? How much does it cost? All right, e-voice, everybody. E-voice, e-voice. Why don't you get this shit? Um, e-voice, everyone. You're a business owner. But automated phone systems and secretaries are secretaries are not in your budget just yet, and juggling incoming calls can make you seem like you're not even professional. Well, here's something that will dramatically affect your ability to make more money in 2014. What is it? It's eVoice, everybody. Whether you're a business of one or 100, eVoice will help you manage all of your incoming calls with a toll-free number. Dial by name directory and call routing tools. Your business will sound like a million bucks. Can't take a call? No problem. eVoice will transcribe that voicemail and email it right to you so you'll never be caught off guard again. And with eVoice, you can try it before you buy it over there. Right now, just for my listeners, they're only advertising here, everybody. This is exclusive. You can get a 60-day... What the hell's with these typos this week? A 60-day trial of eVoice, absolutely free. Go to eVoice.com and enter the promo code BILL, B-I-L-L, for the people who went to public schools. Do that at checkout. Take charge of your business and make more money in 2014. Go to eVoice.com and enter in BILL at checkout for your 60-day free trial. That's eVoice promo code BILL. Okay. Oh, here they are. Our old friends. Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club, everybody. There are so many things that piss me off. Not having solar robes. The fact that I rented a Chevy Impala this week because my truck's getting fixed and it's supposed to be the flagship one with the V8 that when I'm on the slightest little bit bit of a hill and I go to put it in reverse, it rolls forward a little bit like some hunk of crap from the 70s. Come on, Chevy. You can do better than that. Those are a few things that piss me off. And you know what else pisses me off? Oh, he's coming around again, everybody. Paying way too much to shave my freckled face is definitely up there. Ah, nothing feels better than shaving with a fresh new blade, everybody. But new razors are so ridiculously expensive that you can't afford to change your blade more than once every six months. So you end up scalping your face with an old blade. Come on, we've all been there. Dollar Shave, you change your blade as much as you change. You've got to buy new deodorant. That's basically the deal. Unless you're with uh, Donald Trump. You know, and then you pretend you have money for blades. You drive around your dumb helicopter with your name on the back. Trump. Dollar Shave Club delivers top quality raises for a few bucks a month. Dollar Shave Club members always shave with a fresh blade because they get a fresh pack in the mail every month. Talk candidly about your experiences with the program. Well, you just explained it. All right? Don't tell me what to do, Dollar Shave Club. I'll talk candidly when I feel like it. They've got lots of other great products like the classic... Dr. Cavi's EV Shave Butter. He's a shave butter. And Dr. Cavi's post shave. Post shave, that sounds very sexual. Post Dr. Carvey's post coital. Coital, sorry. Join the hundreds of thousands of guys who've upgraded to the smarter way to shave. Shave time, shave money. Join dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. B-U-R-R. Support this podcast and a great company by going to dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. Dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That is a great company. You know, for years I used to sit there going, why the fuck does it cost so much goddamn money? You know? But all I did was talk about it. That son of a bitch went out and did it. Now he's the millionaire. 
Oh, Jesus. All right, let's talk sports here. All right, let's start with the NBA. Something I never watch, but, you know, it's the conference finals. I've had some downtime. So basically what I've been doing is um, it's the the hockey conference finals and the, the NBA conference finals. So what I do is I tape the NBA game as I watch the NHL game live. And then the following morning I watch the NBA game. And i got to tell you, it's been a slice of heaven. It's been a slice of heaven. Um, and you know what? I got back into NBA hoop. And I got back into the simplicity and the beauty of just coming out there with a ball, trying to put it through a hoop. It's a fucking pure game. It is a wonderful game. If those fucking refs would just got, would they, they would just relax. Classic example. I don't even know who won this game yet. And I'm going to go watch it as I upload. I've only watched the first quarter of the last OKC uh, San Antonio Spurs game. All right. Now, as far as I understand, the job of the referee is to keep the game under control. Keep the game under control and let the players decide who's going to win the fucking game. All right? I watched the first quarter of the game. All right? OKC's already in trouble because that Serge Ibaka guy, is that how you say his name? Their big man is hurt. All right? So he's on the elliptical. So they got Kendrick Perkins in there. And what does the fucking ref do? Gives him three fucking bullshit, two definite bullshit fucking calls and puts the guy in the bench. They already got one guy in the elliptical. You know they need Kendrick Perkins. And you give him two bulls. The guy had fucking three fouls in the first quarter. The last two, I swear to God, he was standing there scratching his ass. And they gave him a foul. Then I watched him with, uh, who's, who's the guy there who, who you know. Ah, uh, what the fuck's his name there? Point guard. Who sometimes turns into an eight-year-old. Ah, begins with a W. Why do I keep thinking Witherspoon? Because I'm old. You know what I'm talking about. That fucking guy, right? Manu Ginobili, whatever his name is. That guy who refuses to shave his fucking head. Steals the ball from him. All right? So you see the fucking guy. He turns into the eight-year-old. He runs right up and tries to slap it away from him. Takes a foul. And he's, you know, and he's sitting there. He doesn't even look at the ref. He says something like, that's fucking bullshit. And the ref is standing there staring at him. How do I know he's staring at him? Because even the guy do announcing the game, Reggie Miller, I think it was, was going, that ref should have fucking given him the foul and walked away. He stands there. Not only stands there, stands there staring at him, waiting for him to say something. Now, I know. I know this guy probably has a fucking reputation for doing that. But it's just like that it's a complete fucking abuse of power. And these guys, their job is to to keep the game under control, not control the pace of the game. And that's what I fucking hate about the NBA. All right, there. Okay, there. Sorry. I got my fucking tampon mentality this week. But it's a fucking thing that I cannot stand about the NBA, the goddamn officiating. Whether it's fixed or not, I don't fucking know. But those guys, they need to relax. Cleo, what is the problem? What is the problem? I just gave you a bath. I rinsed you good. Fucking thing. I, you know, it's such a ridiculous level how much I love that dog. You know, the thing, the thing drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Um... Anyways, but it's still great. What a great series. Uh, even though OKC is down at this point, two games to none. I don't know if it's three at this point. It's just, I don't know. Spurs are fun to watch. OKC is fun to watch. And, uh, you know, as much I imagine Pacer fans are frustrated with their team, you know, they just don't know how to win yet. They, they, you know what they're like? They're like the little brother that's big enough at this point to finally win a fight against his older brother, but they, they, the older brother has the psychological advantage because he's been kicking their ass their entire fucking life. You know? Oh, hang on. She's scratching again. Um, that's their problem. You know? I don't know. Jason Lawhead knows the game better than me. He also says their coach stinks and Larry Bird should literally walk down and fire the guy <laughs> during the game and just take over. Because he's getting brutally outcoached. I have no idea. I'm just actually happy that I'm watching the NBA again. I just wish these fucking refs would just put their fucking whistles away. 
or at least just be consistent. I, 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 they, they are the fucking worst. And I know in every sport you can have bad officiating and you can have shit calls, but, like, the NBA is, is at the top of the fucking list because it goes beyond bad calls. It go, because with their power, they can put guys on the bench. It's, it fucking drives me nuts. Relax, Bill. Okay, I will. Um, let's talk to some hockey here. How about those fucking Rangers? I have never. I can't. I think the last time I was this wrong about somebody, the 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 fucking Patriots traded Blue Drew Bledsoe to the Buffalo Bills, and I was like, that guy's gonna come back to haunt us. And I forgot that the poor bastard was playing for the fucking Bills, and it isn't his fault. But I thought they were gonna come back and kill us. Um, and I also thought that Tom Brady got lucky his first year. That's what I thought. See, so I don't know shit. And I also just have not been believing in the Rangers. And here they are, one game away. Ladies and gentlemen, the New York fucking Rangers, who's tortured their fans every fucking year except 1994, since 1940. They've been torturing those motherfuckers. They are one game away from going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, it's been a great... What a fucking game that was. I mean, it could easily be 2-2. Um, just an incredible game yesterday. And um, I really enjoyed... Uh, I've really been enjoying that series because um, I know the Canadians aren't going to quit. I think they're going to win the next one. And uh, then it'll be game six. It's going to fucking, you know, add pressure to the Rangers. Like, fuck, we can't lose this one because we, we don't want a game seven with these guys. I'm basically praying for both series, both the Kings, Hawks, and the uh, Rangers, um, Canadians, to go seven games. Same thing with the basketball, even though it doesn't look like it's going to. Um, I want more hockey, more hoop, okay, to bridge the gap between the end of those series and the beginning of NFL football. But then again, why am I shitting on the national pastime? Why don't I just fucking embrace that too? That's what I should do. I don't fucking know. But um, And then, then the Hawks-King series has just been fucking ridiculous. Um. The Hawks came out game one. It they just look like what everybody thought they were. Just this, this. I guess they, if they win it this year, they are considered a dynasty. When, you know what's funny is the level, the amount of teams, and how hard it is to win a championship has increased over the years. That when I was a kid, you had to win three in a row to be a dynasty, and then three in four years. Like they gave it to the Patriots, where we won one. Buccaneers won, and then we won, we won. We won three and four years, and they said that was a dynasty. And now, hockey, Chicago won 2010, 2013, and then if they win again this year, they were going to give them a dynasty. Um, whatever you want to call it, it's fucking impressive what they're doing because they lose guys every year, but they're somehow able to, to not um, dip in quality like the way we did. You know, we made some moves, got rid of Tyler Sagan and some of those guys, got a little bit older, a little, little more inexperienced at the same time, and I think that hurt us in the end. Um, what the Hawks are doing, amazing. But then the fucking Kings come roaring back. What was it 6-2? to two? Just kick their ass. And then the Hawks come back, game three, I think, and, and it's just that was just like a heavyweight battle. Them just going at it, and uh, I can't can't wait. If you listen to this podcast before game tonight, jump on the fucking bandwagon. If you just want to watch hockey at its highest level, watch the Kings Hawks series. It's fucking insane. Um, I actually tried to get tickets for tonight, didn't work out. I don't think it's going to work out. Called up my connection, and it ain't fucking happening there. But uh, I'm definitely going to be watching that series. Dry. Do you guys know I'm one day away from 40 days without a drop of booze? Fucking brutal. You know? I swear to God, if I went to an AA meeting right now and they tried to give me one of those chips, I'd throw it at them. You know? Fucking throw it at them. Just start screaming, I'm not enjoying this! Um, I like that I've lost some weight, but uh, I'm getting ready to do a special, everybody. And tickets are on sale. If you want to be at the live taping of my next special, so you can say to your loved ones, I was there when that hour of filth was recorded. Um, I will have the link up. Tickets are going fast, thank God. I'm going to be at the Tabernacle in um, Atlanta, Georgia. And I can't wait to come back. It's one of my favorite theaters. And uh, 
I'm really hoping, um, I don't know. I'm nervous about this one, man. I got to try to top my last one, which is the only thing you can really do is just try to top your last one. And, um, I don't know. Yeah, I got to get myself in the mindset. I'm not in the mindset yet. That mindset has to be where you don't give a fuck, but you do. And you're having fun and you're improv and like I would during a normal show. So I basically have to block out. That's the thing. You block out that the cameras are there and then you also don't start thinking like, oh, fuck, I missed a tag. Who gives a fuck? No one's going to know. Okay? You're not documenting the joke. You're documenting like that night's performance of the joke and that's the way it came out. Once you do that, then you can fucking free yourself up. So, um, whatever. I just want to fucking do it already. I was supposed to be doing it the first week and I was going to do it in San Francisco, but uh, the fucking unions up there, Jesus Christ, fucking beat. I'm pro union, beating the shit out of me. You got to fucking hire 15 guys to uh, bring a mic stand out on the fucking stage. And I'm like, oh, fuck this place. Let me go across the street. Yeah, it's going to be 16 guys. All right. You know what? All the leaves are brown. Fuck this town. I went to Atlanta. I'm definitely coming back now. I'm just going to do I'm just going to do San Francisco. I'm just not going to fucking film there. It's unreal. You know, bad. I, I, I wanted to. I wanted to. But those wacky unions. Um, anyways, <laughs> what else am I talking about here? Um, Jesus Christ, did I, did I do all my topics already? Am I already into the questions? Well, I am 30 minutes in. Um, I'm actually supposed to be going to a, uh, to a barbecue. Um, I had the guy, actually all my buddies over on, uh, on Saturday and we watched game three of the Kings game, dude. It was fucking great. And, um. You know, grilled up some steaks. I'm one of those guys, too. I don't give a fuck. I'll let somebody. If somebody's like, man, let me grill those up. Go ahead and grill them up. I don't give a fuck. You know? I was upstairs making the fucking garlic mashed potatoes like a fucking lady. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't give a fuck. I know that really fucks with my man card that I have another guy come over here and jump on my grill. I don't give a shit. I really don't. I just want to make sure people have drinks. You know? I'm up here wearing my apron. I'm really in touch with my feminine side when I turn on my grill. Lawheads cooked on it. Now Court McCown fucking made the steaks on it. You know, it's not like I don't cook on it, but I just, I don't know. The steaks look so good. I actually got some anxiety. It's like, I don't want to fuck these up. Court threw them on. He handled them. And I was, I, I was up here and I made potatoes. <laughs> ah, what a pussy. Ah, Jesus Christ. Oh my, I hope my dad doesn't listen to this. Um, I got a couple other frozen ones up there. I'll throw them on. I'll make them for me and my wife. Ah, oh, what a pussy. Anyways. Uh, sorry, that's just making me fucking laugh. I really am, dude. I'm either a fucking type A alpha male or I'm wearing an apron. I really am a Gemini. It all depends on the situation. I will either not take an ounce of shit or I will let you roll right the fuck over me as I hand you my wallet. It all depends on the situation. Um, yeah, Bill, it's called being a schizo. Ah, go fuck yourself. Um, all right. All right, the big thing in my life is uh, yesterday. I went out and I bought a new snare drum. And I can't wait because I bought this old Ludwig kit. And I know I've been threatening a long time to be doing these drum covers, but I'm getting close. I got my drum kit and... Uh, I bought an early 70s green sparkle, all fucking bottom sizes. So now I'm like, and of course, they never come with the snare. I don't know what happens with the snare. People just want to keep the fucking snare. And they break up the kit. So I went out, you know, I was looking on the internet trying to find a fucking 1971 Ludwig 6.5 by 14 fucking snare. And I just can't find it. I was just like, you know what? Why don't you just go buy a new one? And then, you know, if one comes along and you, you whatever, you add it to the fucking kit. Who gives a shit? But, uh. I bought it, and oh, does it sound sweet? It sounds sweet. And I've been practicing a lot. I've been on the practice pad big time. And what I learned yesterday when I got behind a kit is the practice pad is not a drum kit, and I sounded like shit. And then what was funny was I went over to go buy a snare drum afterwards, and when they were trying to see if they had a hard shell case for it, I was uh, I got down, I sat on one of those the V drums, 
the electronic kits. And um, those things sound so unbelievable. Like, I was joking with a buddy, oh, Dean Del Rey, from the uh, Let There Be Talk podcast and the All Things Comedy Network. You know, we went over there together, and uh, I was joking with them with those electronic drums. Like, you sit behind a real kit, you're like, oh, my God, I suck. Thank God nobody's here to listen to this. You get behind the electronic kits, and you're just like, how come I'm not in a band? I'm fucking awesome. Like, they sound so unbelievable, and they're so forgiving. Um, I sat down on those uh, those V drums. I'll tell you right now, if you ever wanted to play drums and you're worried about how loud they're going to be and you just want to have fun, you got to get get the fucking V drums. And this is not a commercial. Just get the, This is just me saying this. Just get the fucking V drums because you can actually control the volume of them. You can play them with headphones. You can be downstairs. Your wife can't even hear it, whatever, your roommates or whatever. And if you live in an apartment, all you do is you go out and you get um, – you know those little, I think I've talked about this before. You know those things those overly protective parents get in the playroom? Those interlocking, like little rubber, uh, spongy floor things. So if your kid falls down, he doesn't hurt himself. You just get those. And you get two layers of it, and you put it underneath the kid. And then you go downstairs to your downstairs neighbor, and you say, Hey, my name's so and so. This is my phone number. All right? If I'm ever playing and, and you're at home, Call me up and I will stop immediately. If anybody has a problem with that, they're a cunt. And then you should play at 2 in the morning. All right? There you go. So that's what's going on in my life. Let me read the last of the advertising here and we'll get into your questions there. Oh, by the way, the All Things Comedy, um, once a month we do a show. We do a stand-up show. And uh, the little money that we make goes to help paying the rent at our studio. We do it at the Bootleg Theater. Tomorrow night, listen to this fucking lineup. All right, we got we got Dave Keckner, David Keckner from uh, Anchorman. We got Dana Gould, Dana Gould, one of the greatest stand-up comics ever. That's what we got. We got Al Madrigal, and we got the we got the muscle from the Rose Bowl tailgate legend, Joe Bartnick. That's just four. We got Tom Papa. Tom Pop, it's a, it's a it's a killer line. There's not a better fucking show in Los Angeles tomorrow night. You got to go out. You got to go check it out. Help support the All Things Comedy Network. Um, I, I I would appreciate it, as would everybody else over here at All Things Comedy. All right, Hulu Plus, everybody. Hulu Plus. You've probably tried Hulu on your computer. Hulu Plus is so much more. With Hulu Plus, you can watch current season episodes of your favorite shows like Modern Family, The Daily Show, and Scandal. And watch every episode of shows like Nashville, my wife loves that show, Lost, and Doctor Who. You get ad-free movies and kid show too. Kid shows too, sorry. Now more than ever, there is so much to watch. Take total control with Hulu Plus to stream these shows and thousands more as much as you want, wherever you want. Hulu Plus works on your computer, smartphone, oh, smart TV, Roku, Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, pretty much any streaming device you already own. You can even watch on your, on your phone or your iPad while on the train, at work, at the dentist, or in the bathroom. You can even block off a day to, bin to binge. Dude, I got to start doing this, man. The way I'm on the road, this is fucking great. It's fucking great, man. I love it. You'll also get access to originals all to originals that you can get anywhere else. Check out the new show, Deadbeat, a comedy about a pot-smoking guy who talks to ghosts. Binge on all 10 episodes starting April 9th. Uh, for only $7.99 a month, you get your shows anytime, anywhere. That's like a quarter a day. Come on, people. Right now, sign up at HuluPlus.com slash Bill or click on the banner on my website and get two weeks full access completely free. That's a whole extra week more with this special offer when you sign up at HuluPlus.com slash Bill. So get with it and start streaming TV now with Hulu Plus. And last, mercifully, the last read of this week. Sorry, guys. I'm extra bad this week. Uh, Legal Zoom, everyone. America was built by innovators and dreamers. Jesus, that's a rosy picture. <laughs> innovators, dreamers, and 
homicidal maniacs. Uh, people like Thomas Edison. Oh, what a swell guy he was. And Henry Ford. Oh, yeah, that anti-Semite laid the foundations for our country. I don't know if he was. I don't know if I'm confusing Henry Ford with Walt Disney. Uh, these days, it's the. It, you know what? That's not even their fault. It's just because when they were born, that was acceptable. Um, these days, it's the inventors and the entrepreneurs all around us, like you that keep our country running by fueling the job market and the economy. This month, LegalZoom celebrates innovation by helping you launch your dream. Apply for a patent to secure your invention. Exactly. This is exactly. If you're out there inventing stuff, you need LegalZoom to, to get a patent before those corporate you-know-whats steal it from you. All right? And if they want to buy your idea, don't ever give them ownership of it. Ever. You never give up ownership. All right? I was kidding. If you don't give them part ownership, they'll just steal it from you and be like, what? Go ahead and sue us. I'm telling you people, we need to march up that solar road. Sorry. Apply for a patent to secure your invention. Register your trademark to protect your products and services. Incorporate or form an LLC and launch your business. This is how you do it, people. This is how you protect yourself. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the discount code BURR, B-U-R-R. They'll provide the personal attention you need and help take care of all the details. They've helped over 1 million businesses get started and get started right. And they received an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. These are the guys, everybody. Celebrate innovation with LegalZoom today and get a special price on trademark, copyright, or provisional patent applications by using the discount code BURR, B-U-R-R, at checkout. Once again, LegalZoom provides legal help through independent attorneys and self-help, but they are not a law firm. LegalZoom.com, discount code BURR. That's the way you set it up, everybody. If you've got a great idea, you have to protect yourself from day one because they will try and steal it from you, all right? Every business is the same. My business is no different, all right? You write the show, you bring it to them, we love it, we own it, and then we're going to pay you this. And then in, during residuals, that gets cut in half, and it gets cut in half again, and then one day we're sending you checks for six cents, and we're still collecting millions. And then if you audit us, we're going to label you as difficult. That's how it works, everybody. <laughs> so go to LegalZoom. All right. Okay, here we go. Um, let's, what does this say? Good meal, good emails. Also mentioned the Monday morning podcast. Oh, yeah, the Monday morning podcast. We have our own Twitter account, finally. If you'd like to follow the MM podcast and get the links for all the uh, videos and all the stuff that I talk about, follow us here at the MM podcast. Um, our Twitter handle is at the MM uh, podcast. At the MM Podcast. And MMP is all capitalized. All right? Okay. Here we go. Uh, first one, Bruins. Bill, why didn't the Bruins just take out Kerry Price? Ranger figured this out in game one. Um, ah, come on, man. You don't want to do that shit. You don't want to deliberately hurt somebody. Um, but I will say that I, I don't think Kerry Price is quite as good as people say is. If you go up top, you got the guy, unless you miss it every fucking time the way we did. We really uh, we really screwed the fucking pooch. But um, I definitely think he's one of the elite goalies in the league. But I wouldn't, I think, I'd say the Kings, Mike Quick is the best. Is it Mike Quick or Mike, is that the fucking guy from the Eagles? I'm so fucking old. I just combine generations of people. I got to look this up now. Jonathan Quick. Mike Quick. Yeah, Mike Quick played for the Eagles. I knew that didn't sound right. I've watched people. I've watched all three fucking games. And they've said Jonathan Quick a zillion times. And I still said Mike Quick. I, I, my fucking brain stopped retaining information somewhere around the early, uh, late 80s, early 90s. My apologies to Jonathan Quick. I think he's the best. I'll tell you who I don't think is as fucking good as his, num his numbers is uh, the Blackhawks Crawford. I just think he has an incredible group of people in front of him and uh he plays with the lead a lot so people can get back on deep but i've noticed you know all of a sudden they start chasing it a little bit they got to take their chances i'll tell you that five holes looking pretty tasty there um sorry anyways whatever uh I got to be honest with you. If we took out Carey Price, I mean, I don't think it would have made a difference. The Canadians, they were just better than us, and they're moving in the right direction, and I hope that we do. So uh, there you go. All right? All right. Dilemma. The dilemma here for the week. Bill, I haven't heard you read a dilemma in a while. Here's one. Would you rather fight three rabid dogs with the thirst for blood with a sword 
Oh, yeah, I could fucking take him out. Or take your chances with one bullet and a bear coming at you from 100 yards away. Keep in mind the dogs can kill you and that it can take more than one bullet to kill a bear. Absolutely, fucking lutely I know that. Hey, I don't know that. I've just watched enough YouTube videos. Um, I actually saw YouTube videos wanting, watching one of those fail win videos. I don't, why do they always have to put a picture of some hot chick bending over and then she's never in it? It's like, I'm going to watch it anyways. What are you getting my hopes up for? Watching people fail and, and succeed is compelling. It's compelling enough. You don't have to put some chick with their fucking, you know, bikini-covered clam fucking winking at me in the beginning of it, and then it's not there. It's false advertising, you cunts. You know what I'm doing is I'm starting to just click on the ones that don't have that. You fucking pussies. Stand on the merit of, of the footage you stole. But anyways, I was watching one of those fail win videos. And uh, there was this guy. He was hunting wild boar. And he fucking shoots at the thing. He misses. And the fucking thing turns around and just starts running at him. He misses again. And then he fucking ran away. <laughs> Dude, you just got it. Your best. What are you going to outrun a fucking wild boar? You're not. Unless your truck's right there. I'm telling you, you got to just stand there. If I had to shoot a fucking bear in the head, you got to shoot him in the fucking head. You got to wait to the absolute last second. I'm talking about urinating down both sides of your pant leg, just standing there like, ah, and just waiting. So you can almost feel his breath. And you better have a fucking 50 caliber. And you just fire that fucker. Um, 100 yards away. Fuck that. Fuck that. Oh, my God. And you know you can feel the earth shaking as that thing's coming at you. I mean, I'm just telling you, you're. that's just comp all organs fail at that point. Uh, fuck that. A, a rabid dogs? Fuck. Yeah, absolutely. With a sword. The great thing about a sword is that gives me a little bit of distance. All right. How do I meet these rabid dogs? Am I lowered into a pit? Is they seeing me? Or are they running at me? If all three are running at me, I stand there. And right as they, the first one starts to leap, I do a little sidestep, a little sachet, if you will, and I fucking just come right down um, whatever, whatever meat I can hit. And at that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to alligator arm it because the last thing I want to have happen is for that sword to get stuck in that thing's flesh as the other two take take it over. I'm really getting into this. I'd fucking give him a nice fucking right there, Fred, right? A little chop to him. Set him to the side. Then the other fuckers, even if one of them's biting me, my move is I'm hacking your leg. I'm hacking your fucking dog. And the people right now are like, oh, my God, I love dogs. Shut up. It's hypothetical. And they're rabid. They got to be put down anyways. And they're trying to kill me. Oh, Billy Redface. Who the, who the fuck side do you want here? So that, that would be my big move. That would be my, my big move. Like, I've always thought if I was ever hiking and somebody, I, I came upon somebody getting mauled by a, uh, a mountain lion. If ever I was actually, I mean, I mean, I know what I would do in real life. I'd be like, well, sucks for him. <laughs> Didn't see that. Sorry. What am I supposed to do? Get mauled too? So I can get on the news? Fuck that. Um, but if for some reason, if it was somebody I gave a shit about and they were going to die, I would, I would run like a Native American. Really fucking softly. And I would leap in the air and I would fucking Matt Cook that mountain lion. One of his back legs, I would just fucking land on its leg and try to blow out, you know, end its, end its lateral fucking movement. And it, it would just fucking, you know, the great thing about wild animals, the great thing about animals in general is they don't have a fucking ego. Okay. So they're just kind of like, you know, when something like that happens, they're just like, okay, I need to go lay down and heal, even though that's not going to fucking heal. That's, that, that's, I don't know. So whatever, that's, that's how I, I would take the three dogs. 
I, I would give a nice jab with the sword to the first one that came to me. I'd take the bite of the second one. I'd hack the leg of the third one, and then I'd fucking start finishing them off. That's what I would do. And then I would go to the hospital uh, with all three carcasses, and I would say, yeah, I got bit by two out of three of these. They're all fucking rabid. And uh, go ahead, stick those needles in my stomach. Let's get it over with and chain me to the radiator. And let's see if I go mad or something, you know? Shit. All right. I like the dilemmas. Let's bring the dilemmas back. I also liked YouTube videos of the week. There was a lot of, there was a lot of fucking things out there. Oh, remember back then? We, we used to have topics. All right. Corporate bullies. Dear Bill, I used to be a bully. Not a terrible one, but the harmless Eddie Haskell type. Um... All right, so you more just you were just like a just an asshole. All right, harmless as I may have been, I'm sure I hurt some feelings and made some experiences less fun for those at the other end. My question to you is, how can I make this right? Um, I know I can't trace down the kids I grew up with, but I see people being dicks in corporate America and want to call them out without losing my job. Do I tease them in the same style we did as children, or take a serious route and give a Denzel speech? All right, first of all, why can't you tra track down the kids you grew up with? It happens all the time on Facebook. I bet you can find a lot of them. You can go to a high school reunion. Um, you could do it that way. I think that would be a great thing to make you feel better and say, hey, I'm an adult now. I shouldn't have done that. Sorry that I, uh, I dumped your books and gave you a fucking wedgie, whatever the fuck you did. Um, I don't know how that works in corporate America I wouldn't give a Denzel speech uh, that those speeches only work in the movies um, do I tease them in the same style we did as children well you know what you need to elaborate they're bullying people um, I don't know you know in the job place if somebody's getting bullied that's really just on them you know and, and just the amount of shit that they've decided that they want to take in life you know, it'd be one thing, you know, if someone was like, you know, putting his secretary in a, in a headlock and was giving her noogies, you know what I mean? There was a bunch of fucking former athletes beating on some former mathlete, you know, hanging outside his cubicle, waiting for him to go over to the water bubbler. They push him in a broom closet and fucking rough him up. Yeah, then you got to do something. But if it's just like mental torture, um... What I would do is I would walk up to the person getting bullied when you get a chance and just say, listen, man, you got to stick up for yourself. Stop taking that shit. What's the guy going to do? Throw his cufflinks at you? What are you afraid of? Fuck him. Um, but I know in, in the work environment, you can't say, hey, fuck you. You have to come more. You have to sit down and just say, hey, can I talk to you for a second? And then they'll listen to you. And then you got to be like, yeah, listen, I just noticed you've been... Uh, you know, coming at me in a manner that, that sort of indicates to me that you're not pleased with something about me. And I was just wondering what that was. You know, and just leave it at that and see what that is. And then, you know, if they want to sit there and try and make your life miserable at that point. Because um, I, I know there's all that passive aggressive horseshit that goes on in an office. Um, but I have not. Unfortunately, never worked in that arena. Tell you what, you know what? I need a little help on this one, everybody. Um, can you guys write in some, not really corporate bullies things. Can you write in uh, some passive aggressive shit that's been happening? Like they do, they want you to quit, so they keep doing stuff to you. You guys got any stories out there? I think those are interesting. I think those would help me fill up a fucking hour here on the podcast. Um, all right. So, yeah, I, I, I would go to a high school reunion I'd go to a high school reunion. I think it would be weird to reach out to somebody on Facebook. Hey, sorry for being a dick. Go to a high school reunion. Say it to their face. You know, I would do that. I wouldn't reach out on Facebook. Facebook is, is just fucking weird. Um, anyways, all right. Kid, kid movies. Uh, dear Billy the Kidless. Oh, just when you think there's not an original one left. That's a fucking great one. He said, I'm a father of two little girls. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, all my free time is spent with them, and there's a lot of kids' programmings happening in my life. I was wondering the other day, 
Does Bill like any kids' movies, classics like The Goonies or Disney Animation? Don't worry, even if you don't like any now, you will enjoy them when your own child is getting all giggly and bubbly over the sight of a little mermaid. Um, of course I do. I mean, I didn't, the Goonies, I was too old when that came out. I was already a teenager, so I was watching more quality cinema like Youngblood and uh, Roadhouse. Um, let me see here. What, what do I, oh yeah, I like all the Disney stuff. Um, I never liked Mickey Mouse's voice though. I liked Goofy. I liked Pluto. Donald Duck was fucking hilarious. Why do they always make the duck be the dick? You know, did Warner Brothers rip off Donald Duck with Daffy Duck? I ha And I hated Daffy Duck, by the way. I couldn't stand that fucking dude. And after a while, I didn't like Bugs Bunny either. Bugs Bunny always won, so he was fucking annoying. And Daffy Duck was just kind of this piece of shit. You know? He just, you know, he just would do shit to fuck himself over. You're not flying south for the winter, and now I'm supposed to feel bad for you? You... you Cleo, I got to give you another bath. What's wrong with you? Do you need a flea treatment there, Cleodio? Huh? You know what's funny about her? When she's anticipating me, either saying if she wants to, well, she's already, I can't even say want, go to a play, basically outside, or go for a ride. Her ears, <laughs> she's staring at me right now, perk up. They, she looks like bat ears. Her eyes, like her eyes, she just locks in on me. This psycho pit bull look. Her ears come up and she just stares at me with all senses like, did he just say what I said, thought he said? I would actually get her riled up, but it's a mean thing to do. You want me to do it? Fine, I'll do it. You want to hear her howl? She does this every once in a while. Cleo. Cleo, do you want to go for a ride? Huh? Cleo. Cleo. Do you... <laughs> all right, we'll go in a second. We'll go in a second. Go lay down. Go lay down. Sorry. I got you all excited. You know what I just did? I just did like those fail win videos. I put the hot chick in the beginning, didn't I? I'm sorry, buddy. Good girl. We'll go in a minute. Um, woo -woo -woo. Okay. Um, yeah, I like... Um, I didn't like The Little Mermaid. I'm not into fish women. It's just fucking weird. And then there's always some sort of like the guy ends up fucking the fish woman. It's just... It's fucking creepy. Like Splash. You know? I mean, this is really crude, but I, you just always think, you know... You just think the downstairs is going to be a little ripe, if you know what I mean. <laughs> How do you tell? Do you look in her eye? If her eye's cloudy, you don't go down there? Oh, Jesus, that's a fish joke, everybody. Huh? That's how you pick out fresh fish. Hey, you know what? I actually looked up this recipe. This is my favorite thing on YouTube. It's for garlic, ma garlic mashed potatoes. And this is how the guy, the, the way the guy ends this video is so fucking priceless. Um... Let me see if I can bring this up. This is this is the YouTube video of the week. Ah, oh, Jesus, with the advertising. Don't they know everybody hits fucking mute and then scrolls down and you just look at the yellow bar? That's what I do. Eight more seconds. Six more seconds. Three, two, one. All right. So basically, uh, this guy makes... potatoes are a delicious side dish that pair well with you, meats, poultry... I just want you to hear I'm this. glad you did. Whoa, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up. All right, here we go. So he basically, I just said shut up to a video. That's how dumb I am. Um, he basically uh, makes these garlic mashed potatoes. You know, in the end, then they got to try it and tell you how fucking delicious it is. This is it right here. Listen to what this guy says. This is, this fucking, this made my week. Here we go. Recipe, you'll be glad you did. Thanks for tubing in. Man, that's good. <laughs> Man, that's good. Yeah, it's just a, that's a fucking guy. You you could not get mad at that guy. I played that for Nia right before we went to bed last night, and she she almost fell out of the bed laughing. 
He goes, thanks for YouTubing. He goes, that's garlic mashed potatoes. Thanks for YouTubing. See you next time. And then he puts the garlic mashed potatoes in his mouth. And then he just goes, man, that's good. Uh, you know what? In his videos, we'll get better because I've actually seen outtakes where he's actually more relaxed, more like who he is. He's just been doing them. I don't know. This is from a few years ago. Yeah, whatever. I always believe that people are going to get better. All right. So here we go. What have we got one more read here. All right. First time. Dear Billy Go Lucky, I'm going to lose my V card next weekend. Jesus Christ. I always, that always surprises me when people know when they're going to lose their virginity. Doesn't it just happen? Like it did for me. You know, like it's never going to happen. And then somebody just grabs your dick and you're like, oh, shit, here we go. Woo! And you're driving home. Yeah! <laughs> I didn't know people planned it. Right? I like how I just said somebody just grabs your dick. Like it could be anybody. Like some fucking 60-year-old man. Gross. Um, what was I going to say? Like you guys actually plan this shit out? It's going down next Sunday. Um, I'm going to lose my V-card next weekend. Me and the girl are corny high school lovebirds, and it couldn't be more right. I think I know the answer to this question, but I'll ask you anyways. Should I blow it in her face? <laughs> oh, no. Should I blow it in her face to c commemorate the occasion? Then he says, kidding. Real question. Should I think about mixing up positions or just keep it eye to eye love making? Um, yeah, I, uh, I gotta be honest with you. I, I never, I never hooked up with a virgin. Okay. The woman, it was a woman. She was a woman that, and, and she had been around the block. All right. So there was no, uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't have that experience. Uh, I would probably say the first time you do it, you don't want to flip her over. Um, yeah, this is a big responsibility. I would try to keep it as loving and as nice as you can. And uh, I would probably do that the first half dozen to dozen times. And, and then, you know, you know, let it get comfortable there, buddy, before you start fucking trying to... You know what it is about your kids is the amount of porn you've probably watched, the access that you have to it, you know? I wonder if, if, if kids, uh, that's a fucking creepy thought. Sorry, strike that. I wonder if, I shouldn't even say kids, teenagers of age. I mean, they got to be better at it than we were. We had no idea. All you had was rumors when I was a kid. You didn't know what the fuck you were doing. You had to figure it out. You just walked into the bush. No fucking trail, no nothing. You guys are walk. You guys are walking right down the open highway. Just to, do you know something? I I didn't even the the thought of blowing it in, in some woman's face. Like I I didn't even you didn't even think, who, who even thought of shit like that. I'm, I'm trying to think when the facial came around. I think when I was in high school, like the two pornos I think I ever saw, the big thing was when the VCR came out, and then all of a sudden, you know? And then it was somebody had to have the balls to go into, through those fucking saloon doors at the back of the video shop, and you just fucking went in there. Uh, you just grabbed one really quick. What'd you get? I don't know. It had tits. And then you fucking went out. Like, nobody did that. Right? Nobody fucking did. I'm trying to think the first time I even saw that. First time I saw it, I thought it was fucking gross. Like a lot of porn. You're like, oh my God, that's disgusting. And then you're like, oh my God, that's the only thing that gets me off. And then you move to the next level, which is the danger of porn. Right? You just keep going further and further down the fucking abyss. And next thing you know, you could work on a vice squad without getting sick while you're eating a fucking mayonnaise sandwich over there. Sorry, this is getting gross, but it's true. And if elected... No child under the age of 18 will be allowed to watch somebody bust it in somebody's face. Ask not whose face you can bust it in. Um, yeah, wow. Jesus Christ. I mean, even like your question, like how fucking uh, advanced you already are if you never fucking did anything. Because when, I, like I said, there was no video. We had no game film. 
when I was a kid. That you guys can sit there and go over and over and over like fucking Bill Belichick. We had no, there was no game film. And then, because there was so little information, you had to act like you knew everything. And someone would bring something up and, you, you, and you'd be sitting there on the outside, just total fucking World Series of poker face. And on the inside, you were panicking, going, what the fuck are they talking about? What is that? I don't know what that is. You know? And I don't know if my dad knows what it is, but I'm certainly not talking about it uh, to him because that's fucking gross. Just talking to him about it would be fucking gross. And then a whole other level, is he doing that to my mom? How the fuck does he know that, right? So, I don't know. So, like I said, just keep it. I, I love making. I, I would leave it at that. All right. And with that, everybody, that is the Monday po- morning podcast here for Memorial Day. All right. Thank you to all the troops. Anybody who's ever served and uh, for giving me the wonderful life that I have, protecting my life and all. And it means a lot more to me now that I actually, you know, got that chance to go over there to Omaha Beach and everything, added a whole nother level of reality to it. So uh, that is it. So thank you to all the troops. The rest of you guys, go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you next week. Um, get your solar panels. Get your idea patented. And if you're making love to a virgin this week, let's try to keep it eye to eye. Huh, guys? All right. See you. Uh, you know, what's going on here? How come you're not, you're not watching TV? What are you, reading books in there? Fucking eating apples off a tree? How come you're not using any electrical uh, electricity there? Does that happen? Is it a, it's not illegal to be off the grid. They just sort of fucking... Uh, do they bully you at all? Like, Just let me know what I'm in for. All right? Because what I would love to do is to continue spending my legal tender... That really has nothing behind it other than the faith of every freckled-faced cunt over here. Um, I would really love to continue existing in this, but I would like to have the backup that if the shit does hit the fan, before I'm overrun by a mob, you know, because mine's the only light on the top of the hill. See, that's I used to do a bit about that. That's the thing. Like, if, if you actually have, if you're off the grid, all right, and everything just goes fucking haywire you immediately you got to cut your lights out quick okay because the first thing when everybody loses power they stand there go oh you gotta be fucking shitting me i was watching two broke girls over here right that's the first thing you flip the switches is it and then you know within 30 seconds you're like is it just our house and you look out the window so you basically you have 30 fucking seconds to cut all your lights off Tell your wife to shut the fuck up and get downstairs in that little corner room. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, May 26th, uh, 2014. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Go to a parade. Show your fucking respect. And go eat a bunch of burgers. Um, and then you'll get fucking shit face and say something that you shouldn't have fucking said. Maybe hit on your wife's sister. Get punched in your fucking head. Um, anyways, if you can, you can hear the echo in the room that I'm back downstairs is the, the project downstairs inches along. Um, you know, those of you listening to this podcast, you know, from a year and a half ago, not even a year and a half, 14 months ago when I had that fucking water damage. Um, I like to think it was a blessing in disguise because the part of the house upstairs was immaculate <laughs> and I had just redone that room. So that sucked. But below it was, it was, it was a fucking tree fort. It was shit. It needed to be fucking replaced anyways. It's a fucking, I don't know. I didn't want to get into it. And now of course they get under the house and what I already knew was because I had somebody do some electrical on my house before. He was cleaning up a little bit down there, and he's in the crawl space, which is right underneath my living room. And I hear him down there. Every once in a while, I was hearing this guy just going, what the fuck? (laughs) So I knew it wasn't good. I knew it wasn't good, and he told me that there was a lot of shit work down there, and I'm lucky I didn't have a fire, and that he replaced most of it. So the foreman on this other job... You know, some of the stuff that they've taken out, they actually, you know, accidentally disconnected the phone. You know, bullshit happens as these guys work on your house. So 
you know, he reiterated, you know, he didn't use the F-bomb, but I could tell by what he was talking about that I had some issues in the electrical department in my house. So, um, you know, I'm going to get that all taken care of, which brings me to my question here. Solar power, everybody. Can I take five minutes just to be a fucking hippie, man? Um, every once in a while, I go in and out of my fucking, you know, I'm with the team and now and then and then I'm against the team, you know, kind of like a fucking uh, like a Randy Moss, you know, you come into town, you got your mind right. And after about a season and a half, you start acting like a fucking maniac. That's how I feel when I look at uh, whatever the fucking exp- I'm really trying to avoid the expression, the powers that be. But um, I don't know. I can't help it every time when I land in Los Angeles and I look out at the basin, as they call it, um, from the San Gabriel Mountains all the way south of that, which is fucking L.A. and greater L.A., all of that. Just what an absolute clusterfuck it is. And um, what happens when the shit hits the fan? So I'm thinking about getting some solar panels. And I know all you rednecks out there are saying the obvious thing. The fuck good's a solar panel going to do if you ain't got a gun? What, are you going to keep the guy warm that fucking shoots you in the head and steals your provisions? I understand the fucking bearded wonder, all right? I get it. But one step at a time. One step at a fucking time. First thing I want to do, I want to get, you know, it's ridiculous. I live in a fucking desert. The house bakes in the sun, and I'm, I still have, I don't have solar power. It's the dumbest shit ever. So uh, I'm going to look into it. And what I want to know is, is, you know, is there two types of solar power? There's one where you're still on the grid, and then there's one where you're off the grid. I like off the grid. And, and if anybody's listening to my podcast, if you're off the grid, like, what happens? Do they, like, do they get mad at you? <laughs> I mean, how do they know? Because all of a sudden your bill goes down. Does that like set off a light, you know, and underneath the mountain that all those Illuminati guys live in? And then somebody pulls up to your house. Hey, I noticed you uh, haven't been making any toast lately. And uh, all right. You put your hand on her shoulder. Firmly. You don't hurt her, but you're not affectionate. You place your hand on her shoulder so she knows that some pertinent fucking information is on the way. And you say, honey, we're the only ones left. We're the only ones left. Look at me. Stop crying. We're the only ones. <laughs> we're the only ones left with power. And I need you to hold it together. Cry it out now. I want you to cry every ounce of bitch you have in you out of you. In this corner of this house. Okay? When you come upstairs, I want you to sit here and act like we do not have power. Okay? So when the Sullivans come across the fucking street and see if we don't have power, you lie to their fucking faces. Shh! Honey, forget about the Sullivans. They're not going to make it. You understand? You know? I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen to anybody, but I don't want to be the Sullivans. You know what I mean? I want a shot. Just give me a fucking shot. That's all I need. I just need some solar panels and a fucking helicopter, and I will get the fuck out of here. That's what you need, you fucking idiots, with your guns. Huh? What are you, Schwarzenegger? How long is that going to last? 